which is about behind the scenes of talk shows, movies, and elsewhere. And I wonder, are you in that book? Did I write a book about behind the scenes of talk shows? Yes, you did, and you, and you mentioned me. I did? But you said how great Letterman was, right. and you said how great Carson was, right. and you went through how that you and he were really not enemies, even though you did that shtick when you were right. on, which was, you know, funny right. all the time. Right. And then you, in, here on page 137, you write, when I took over the Tomorrow Show. No. <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah, when I said, so, well, let's talk about your appearance on the Tomorrow okay. Show. Okay. As you said, I, you know, of course I'm going to be cordial to you, but this is the first time we've appeared together on television for a long uh, time. since I hosted the Tomorrow Show. That's right. I mean, I've been with you on the radio. Yes, sir. And all it took was for me to be sitting in that seat and you to be sitting in this seat to make you a nervous wreck. Was that really? And you told me. You said it. No, yeah, you were right. great. You yeah, were fine. We, we, we had a film clip of you on a horse in a western. Oh, right? yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. What, what yeah. was that from? From The Rifleman with Chuck Connors. That's where you right. were a guest yeah. star, you were a cowboy. No, no, a guest bit, kid, not star. But, but, but you were a cowboy, but you yeah. were sitting there, yeah. Yeah. and you said, I'm so tense, just because I'm sitting in this chair rather than that chair. Yeah. And, and I wonder, I, I have to think it, it was because you... We're not in control. You won't be tonight, of course. That's okay. And, uh, and, and, and you didn't know what I might do or what I might say to you. That's so you right. have to ask yourself, as I asked myself in the one lawsuit I was involved in when I was going to be deposed and I was lying awake that night before the deposition because my attorney said, you've got nothing to hide, but this guy, we have to warn you, is a killer. He's going to go after you. He's going to come after you. He's going to hit you with everything. And I'm lying awake, and I don't. I can tell the full truth about everything. I a, hope your lawyer said, say yes, no, or I don't No, I remember. can't. I can't. I'm the kind of guy, when you ask me something, I do this. Yeah, I got you. I'm I got a, you. Whether I'm in a court or wherever. You know, this was yeah. about a movie I was supposed to do with Joe Clayberg, and she dropped out at the last minute. I'd been working with the writer, and I've been interviewing directors. I worked on it for four months, and they just walked away, and I had a contract to pay or play. And this has never happened to me before or since. But I said... If you'd have said we can't do the movie because Jill's not say something, but just don't walk away. So I said you gotta you gotta yeah, pay me. Yeah. So, so they warned me. This guy's like a stormtrooper. He's gonna come out. He's gonna hit you with Bomber, everything, yeah. you know. And yeah. I said, well, all right, okay. I have nothing to hide. I'm lying in bed. Who? What's he gonna say? I mean, what's he gonna do? And that's what what and nothing. I mean, he hit me hard. His first question to me was. Uh, What's the extent of your education? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I was valedictorian of my high school. I didn't ask you about any honors. Yeah, but, what I, wanted, was the but I wanted to slip that valedictorian thing because that's my big shot. Yeah, you know? right. I, hit that, I come with that. You could ask me something about Beethoven. I come in with a valedictorian. Yeah, I was that's, valedictorian. That's, that's the way I, I work. Yeah, yeah. That's the way I work. Yeah. But so what I'm asking you really, it's a, a long way of, of wanting to know. What do you think you were nervous about? If you because you're not a guest much, are you? No, I'm not, and I don't like to be a guest. Uh, right, so let's, let's assume tonight, because it's an easy uh, assumption, that you were the guest tonight. Okay. What would you be nervous about? What could you possibly, what would you be afraid I might do or ask Absol you? Uh, nothing, nothing. I, it's not a, that I have a fear of that. It's just that I, I just am not comfortable be, oh, being a <laughs> 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 I'm not comfortable being asked questions. You're not comfortable being asked questions, no. but, but questions come up in this conversation. Yes, like, they you do don't like the role, the guy who's going to be asked. I mean, you walked into the green room. The first thing I, I said to you is, you, your arms are so long, you look like you could scratch your ankle without bending over. You didn't quite say that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Even privately, I don't say what you alluded to. I said, you really could scratch the bottom of your knee. Uh -huh. Or the back of your yeah, knee, you yeah. know. And you said, well, that didn't throw you. You reached out and said, yeah, you're right, I could. So, I mean, I don't know what you even got to wor be worried. I think you should be a guest. You have to know that when you did that show and I was there, that was an especially difficult time. For NBC and for the Tomorrow Show because we were coming to the end of the run. And it was really great when you put up the picture of Rona Barrett. I like that part a lot. You know? <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> you know what I did do? You mentioned this friend of mine, Nick Arnold. Nick Arnold yeah. is a producer comic that I booked in that four-day yeah. period. But what you didn't mention, he has severe cerebral palsy. But if you listen, he's funny. He's hilarious. Yeah. And everyone said he's going to book a guy who has, you know, has yeah. all the, the, the problems. Well, I mean, I could understand that. I said... You're going to be able to understand them. And if you really concentrate on what he's saying, funny. you'll be falling off your chair yeah. repeating what he said the next day. That's how funny he was. Right. I right. had him. I had Artie Garfunkel. I had uh, I.F. Stone. A journalist. George yeah. Gilder and Bella Abzig. And um, I really enjoyed it. I liked doing it, too. Now, you begin a syndicated show for King World Television. Is that Well, that's a rumor. That is totally in the rumor stage. You're you know? kidding. And that's we, not set we, to go? We don't, we, don't, we don't confirm or deny uh, rumors at all.
We don't. That's not an official release from me or from King World. It's a. It's a whisper. It's a rumor. But, uh, and I uh, appreciate you bringing it up. Let's flash a picture of King World on the screen. No, no. Uh, another topic it says here that Charles might want to discuss, and obviously he doesn't, uh, is his latest project, a syndicated talk show with King World. That's what it says right here. I have on. no doubt it says that there. When does it start? How many stations will it be on? And what time of the day is it going to air? What time are you on? 12.37. We're going on at 12.37. <laughs> well, welcome to the fray. You know, welcome to the podcast. I don't know. I like to do this, though. I mean, I, if I'm not on television, I'm doing this somewhere else without a camera. It's the same thing. I mean, I do That's this right. most of the time. Yeah, just talk and, and rattle and, on. Be, yeah. And when you open the show by saying people like me never come on unless it's Charles Groden Week in America or if we have something to sell, I mean, you're a guy that doesn't go on under any circumstances at all, whether you have something to sell or not. I do go on And you've never even time. had anything to sell. You didn't mention that. Have you ever done anything that you could go on a show and sell it? <laughs> no. You've never written a book. You've your never been in a movie. You're not going to go on for the rifleman. So you can't go and knock at all of us superstars. Come on. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is, I would go on. I like to go on. I went on Letterman uh, August 12th, uh, and I didn't have anything to sell. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I saw the show. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and when you go on this show, like you'll have guests come on? I, you, the reason I don't want to talk about the talk show is that if I, whatever I say, you know, what if I say that and then we don't have any guests? You were saying how hard it is to get guests. Very tough. I don't know that we can get any guests. I don't want to put myself on the line until we actually have a guest. I play it very carefully. Well, before Jay, Jay, Jay Leno said to me last you night, are you going to do a model? No, I'm going to do a model. Well, it's tough to get those celebrity guests. Well, I don't know that we're going to do We may not even have a set. <laughs> <laughs> That's, we'll a, see. that's a great attitude. Yeah, though. we'll that's see. A, it's We're, a great attitude. We'll do something. Yeah. You know what I thought I would do when we go to CB, when, when I go to CBS? <laughs> <laughs> I see. Is that we would, I would just do one show and then say, thank you for watching. Good night, everybody. Yeah. And, and, and that would be it. Remember when Hughes took up the Spruce Goose? It yeah. flew for yeah. 20 seconds. Yeah. He yeah. said, yeah. hey, it's, yeah. it's fine. Put it away. I'll call if I need it. And it worked, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now, now, are you going to do, would you mind talking about what you're going to do? Yes, I do. I see. Why would that be? <laughs> well, because I don't know what it's going to be. <laughs> I see. you got two guys here who are kind of vamping, in other words. Perfect. Perfect that we're here. Perfect for television. When you were on with Carson and you did all that stuff, you didn't mean that. that, that I didn't mean anything. I've been joking since, uh, for uh, let's see, 1972. That's 22 years yep. of joking. That's all I'm doing. I mean, uh, last night I was, I was on uh, Jay Leno, and then a woman, a lady, uh, I wish I knew her name. I apologize for not knowing her name. But, you know, I, I barely know your name, to be honest. I'm very self-involved. Yeah. Anyway, she, she came out, and uh, she talked about how she had this blind date, but uh, it didn't work out because the guy didn't want to pay for valet parking. And I, was, and I said, oh, that's ridiculous. I said, that's unbelievable. He wouldn't pay for ba valet parking? That, oh, for God's sake. You know, now, I'm sure a lot of people tuning in say, wow, Groden really is upset that a guy upset. wouldn't pay for valet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've been doing this... Uh, Letterman once had me on. He, he called me up and he said, I want to do a thing where... Uh, oh, he didn't call me. I've never spoken to David Letterman other than on the air. Somebody from the show called me up. I don't know the man. I think he, you know, he could be a Japanese fellow. Off he's camp. not. I have no idea. No. Anyway, they call me up and say that this, the bit would be that you come in and me, David's not going to be there. You're going to break? You want to go to commercial? If I could, yes. Yeah, we're not going to do that on my show. No commercials, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> my kind of show. I've done those. Back with Charles Groden, author of We're Ready For You, Mr. Groden, after these messages. <laughs> we're back with Charles Groden, TV, movie, and radio star. So you were saying... Primarily radio. Stuff. Primarily radio. Yeah. Most people don't realize. Yeah, and so you were talking about... I was, yeah, so they called me from the Letterman show, and they said, well, the thing is that you'll come on, and he won't be there, and the story will be that he has to be home because the cable people are coming. He's got the afternoon appointment from <laughs> 1 to 6, and they're late, and he's delayed up at his home, and he'll Very really fun. be in his office, and he'll be on a monitor, and you come in, and you'd be really outraged that he's not there. So I introduced me, I come out, and then uh, there's nobody there, and he's on the monitor, he's talking to me, and he explains how he's held up at home because the yeah, cable people yeah. didn't come. And I said, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I had, a, I had a commitment to come here, and I, and I came here. Right. I mean, you as the host of the show, you have to expect that you're going to be here. And to say that a last-minute cable thing came up, and you had to stay home because the cable people, <laughs> I think it's really it. outrageous. Yeah. I mean, I could have a last-minute thing come up, to, and I really carried on just the way they asked me to do. They yeah. got so much mail attacking me for my lack of graciousness. Mm -hmm and that I wasn't just a nicer guy about it. So this is the risk you run. Careful. 
Careful, because yeah, if they think I you're know. not a nice guy, I know. Click, click, I know. Click, and you're a very I, nice I guy. Know. I mean, this whole thing. I, well, I wouldn't dare do that if I thought I, if I thought I was anything like that. You know, it takes yes. somebody who's confident of what kind of person he is now, to act like this. Remember on That's the radio when we got to talking about Letterman, about Dave, and you said, you know, that he's a very sardonic and very funny and very talented guy, but he's really not a host. Masquerading as a host. Yeah. Yeah. And was there any fallout on that? There was. On the air, he brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and he yeah. said, you know, I was listening to you on Tom Snyder Radio, and you said I wasn't a host. That I said, right, I said you were a sardonic comedian. He says, but you said I wasn't a host. I mean, I'm sitting here. I've been hosting the show all this time. I said... Yes, you are, but you're a sardonic comedian, yeah. a host, you know, by definition, somebody who's welcoming, who like, right. uh, all the things you associate yeah. with a host. Mentions the book, uh, you know. Yeah, it does all the yeah. by the way, we have to get to that. Yeah. But anyway, he says, he sa I said, you're really not a host, and he says, well, well you're really not a guest. <laughs> you know, by definition of a guest, I wouldn't say you were a guest. Why I said, you? hey, I never said I was a guest. <laughs> you just booked me. I never said I was a guest. That's you think I'm a guest. I'm just here, man, on the way to the airport, looking to have something happen. I'm just trying to have some fun in life. So be a host, Charlie, and yeah, make so it then the show's yeah. over. Yeah. People say, wow, you two guys are really, you know, Steve. going at each other. The last time I was on during a commercial, I said to him, because we were doing something like that. How could you talk because the band is so loud? I, well, we yell into each other's ears, yeah. you know. Uh, and and, and I, I yelled into his ear. I said, you know, a lot of people find this unpleasant. And he yelled back, he says, I don't care. He says, and I don't think you do either. But I do. I do care. He doesn't care because it doesn't matter if he's unpleasant. He's already working. He's got the show. He's a big right. hit. He gets 14 million. What does he care? Yeah. Call him anything you want, you know. <laughs> but I care. I don't want people to think. I mean, he probably is unpleasant. Let's why, be honest, why, you know. Why do you, uh, why do you talk so loud all the time? Is there a microphone? <laughs> yeah, we have, we have amplifiers. I mean, it's such, you know, I thought I thought we we're broadcasting to America. We are, but they they have microphones now. No, you so. gotta like command the screen when you go out there. You're gonna do like the one you and the you. I heard you say it. You want to be on the show without any guests. You just want to talk to with the telephone calls, right? That's exactly. Talk right. loud. Talk loud. Don't talk soft if you don't have guests. So just you know, just keep in the back of your mind. Yes, sir. <laughs> Here about the book. Never mind. They'll, if they like you, see, now let me give you another little. If you appear on television and they like you and they're funny and, and, you, and they know you have a new book, they say, that Chuck Roden has a book about Chauvin. He was so funny on Tom Snyder. Thank you. And let's, he was so let, funny on Tom let's, Snyder. Well, let's buy the let's, book. Let's buy the book. That's it. just what I was going to say. We don't have to sit here and read no, the book. No, we don't. And it's boring. so tacky anyway. It's awful. Here is Joe in Taylor's, South Carolina. Hello. Tom, how are you? I'm fine, Joe. Great. I'm enjoying your show. I'm going to have to be really careful about setting my VCR when you guys, I mean, when you move to CBS. <laughs> <laughs> See, they all think they're going, you know, that's the joke. You know, the other day Kennedy says to me, he says, now, when we go to CBS. <laughs> oh, I see. That's, yeah, yeah, that is yeah. funny. See, Joe right, knows. Sir. Yeah, yeah Joe, Joe knows. Okay, anyway, I, I had a question uh, for uh, for Charles. One or two. Well, first of all, I wanted to make a comment that uh, I read his first book. It would be so nice if you weren't here, and enjoyed it very much. I thought it was uh, Riley funny and uh, really <laughs> funny. Oh, Riley funny. Book. All right. W R Y. All right. And um, also wanted to wanted to get a little insight on a part he did in a movie. He did a a part in The Woman in Red where he went into a bar and pretty much demolished it, playing a. Uh, a blind man. The guy who was he was acting like a blind the man. I went into blind. convulsions. Right. I was wondering how in the world he did that without cracking up. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people love that scene. And to amuse a friend whose wife left him, I go in and pretend I'm blind with a cane and, like, destroy a bar. And yeah, people the love that. The they find it hilarious. Yeah. And I find it, I don't find it even remotely funny. So I had, <laughs> there was no risk of me cracking up. I don't find it funny to go in under any circumstance and destroy other people's property. property right. But I'm playing a part in a movie. I don't, a lot of things I do, I don't personally find funny at all when it comes to acting in movies. Really? Not at all. I don't find that funny at all, so how I didn't did you, have any problem you, how, with Cracker With your attitude, how did you ever get as far as you've gotten? In the it's movie? interesting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I wonder about that as well. You know, and I don't mean that in a negative way. No, I don't you. either. I mean, it is odd. Yeah. You know, I'm surprised I haven't been arrested, frankly. I, I, I mean, I, I sit and listen to you, uh, like with Jay last night, and when I hear you talk about all the things you don't like about what you do for a living, I think, how the hell did this guy ever get in the movies? Yeah, did I talk about that? I don't a little remember bit, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't like to wait. You know, and I don't like authority, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a, yeah, I guess it's true. Well, this new book, in fact, my wife, who's reading it now, 
you know, she said, boy, you're, you're really, you're very revelatory here. You really uh, yeah. tell a lot about yourself. There, there must be a lot in there that I'm not even, you know, you're not so aware of yourself. Did you know that you could scratch your ankle without bending over? Not to your brother. Not, not to your That's brother. what I mean. So unless <laughs> no, you write no, a book. Wait, wait, wait. Ask it again. <laughs> did you know? Did you know that you could scratch your ankle no, without? Oh, but if you'll hum a few bars, I'll try and play it for you. <laughs> Anything else, Joe? No, I just wanted to say my kids, Lauren and Chip, just loved him in the Beethoven movie. Oh, thank you. That's I think good. they're terrific movies. Yeah. I do like those. Yeah. Yes. And did they like the dog, too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and how about Bonnie Hunt? Uh, I like Bonnie Hunt. Good. She's on with Dave tonight. Oh, great. Yeah. I'll have to check her out. Check her out. Okay. <laughs> Take care, Joe. Nice talking to you, Tom. Okay, same, oh, Joe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, Beverly in Chesterfield, Virginia. Hi. Hi, Tom. Hi, Beverly. Hi, I, can, I, I can barely hear you, Beverly. Oh, let me change the phone. Okay, and I, I got to do a commercial, so change the phone. Can you hear me phones. better now? Huh? Yeah, but I got to do a commercial, so change the phone. And we'll be right back, okay? Okay. Uh, Beverly, that's great. We'll continue with Charles Groden, who is the author of We're Ready for You Now, Mr. Groden. This is kind of like Norma Desmond. You know, I'm ready for my close-up, right. Mr. Mr. DeMille. We will continue. How much do I have to fill here? Uh, seven seconds. Oh, seven seconds is nothing. Watch these commercials and take a little sip, and we'll be right back. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> line is Beverly in Chesterfield, Virginia. We're still here, Beverly. How about yourself? I'm still here, Tom. Okay, go ahead. Tom, yes. I got my cup. I just love it. I'm glad you do, Beverly, but I'm don't spread the word, honey, because they're all gone. We have no more to give away, Beverly. I know. I'm a celebrity. Listen, Charles, I really do see it hard to, to picture you as a host. I mean, I adore you, and I loved you in your movies, but you have such an attitude. I was just wondering... How are you going to come across as being, are you going to be like Mr. Nice Guy? Or are you going to have these shows like My Mother Dates My Brother's oh, no, Boyfriend? Or... No, I, don't, I don't do anything like that. <laughs> See, like, she... Tom asked me during the break if I watched, what is it, Bob Berkowitz? Bob Berkowitz, Berkowitz yeah. And I don't know, I'm, I'm quite different. This is me in a guest thing. As a... As a host, I'm more like uh, so you're Norman gonna, Vincent you're, you're Peale gonna, you're type gonna of guy. Guests. I see that it's yeah, well, out. it slipped out. Yeah. You know. No, I'm not like that at all, man. I'm very really? nice. But are you going to lose? Are you going to lose your appeal? I mean, don't you think that a lot of this is your appeal? Yes, I will lose my appeal, but I'm going to be very uh, nice. Well, you're going to be very nice. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, that's good. 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 I mean, I've been advised, you know, to just, you know, drop it. Don't be an uh, unpleasant, you know, bad guy. Be a very sweet guy. And I'm going to be just like, hello, welcome to the show. Very oh, nice no. And then that, no? No. Oh, we, we'll change it. We'll change it. We'll do whatever you have to do. Okay. I'm not wet at anything. But okay. Beverly, 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 yes, why would you say, as you said when you came on the line here, that you didn't think Chuck was going to be good as a host? Well, he was talking about when he was talking about that he told Letterman about the guest and the host. You know, you know, and I just can't picture him as a host. Can you picture? Can you picture him interviewing people with a with a straight face? Oh, Chuck here? Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> well, if you've got people interviewing no, people I... with straight faces all over television, I think you need some. See, my face is basically a crooked face. It just tilts a little this way, and that's what we need on television. Somebody who doesn't have a straight face. I interviewed Tom. I interviewed. I was on the Tomorrow I think, Show. I, I think Beverly that he's got a take. I mean, when you read his books, he's got a take on life that is missing on television. This very wry and sardonic way of looking at things, yet without the blackness or the darkness yeah. of uh, Dennis Miller, who can get very yeah. black, for yeah, example, very, and very, very and very. I, th I, th I don't think yeah, any of those other guys are any good, to be honest. <laughs> you, know, I think, you know, television's just waiting. No, I'm going to be very nice and kind of like, you know, wry and sardonic, that kind of I stuff. Just, you but know, not I'm mean sorry, and I Beverly, I probably will not be mean and unpleasant. I like you so much, and it seems like old times. And I just wish that you would do more movies like that. They, I mean, they're just darling movies. You were terrific in it. And I watched the Beethoven movies. But, you know, I still think you've got that sex symbol appeal. Why is there so much laughter in the green room right now? I don't understand that. I agree with you, Beverly. I've been saying my whole life. You know, let me tell you something about sex symbol. I always was a sex symbol uh, in life. True. In life. True. I am, to be honest with you, a sex symbol. I've been a sex symbol uh, like around when I was 17, I became one, and I am even to this day. To believe this me. Day. Ask the, some of the. Uh, believe me, I am a sex symbol. But when you play a guy that's upset because the dog is on the bed or something like that, people don't think of that as a sex that's symbol. That's right. You put me in Dances with Wolves because I can ride bareback just like that. <laughs> Kevin, whatever his name is, you know. I can do all that stuff. You put me in one of the... And I'm your sex symbol. It's a matter there of you how you're, they see you as you're in the movies, but in a second. 
in a second. The minute they put me in that, forget about talk show host. I'll move right into sex symbol, though. Hey, hey, remember, it seems like old times how Goldie Hawn just fell apart in your arms. That's huh? right. Exactly. That's right. In, exactly. Fact, in fact, I was over. I was visiting my mother today, and she has a picture of me and Goldie Hawn in bed together. Really? It was from the movie, but there I, we are. And I said, well, I haven't seen that for a while. I don't want to keep it up in my room. I'm a married man, you know. Yeah, I could leave but, the trouble. Uh, yeah. Honey, you don't mind if Goldie and me are uh, <laughs> up there. Uh, what about that painting you said we were going to get? Ah, oh, forget it. What about me and Goldie right over the, you know. <laughs> Beverly, I'm glad you called. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, night. Beverly. Now, let's get back to the laughter that you heard when you mentioned the word sex symbol. Yeah. We're, uh, see if they're laughing in the control room. Right. The well, they weren't room. laughing. No, see if they, 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 they were not. <laughs> Close the control room door. They weren't laughing at the idea of me being. They were laughing because I made a joke. They know. I mean, just on the way in here tonight, I don't even want to tell you. <laughs> Because <laughs> I know my wife is watching, you know, what happened. I couldn't even get from my car to this chair without certain things taking People place. People throwing themselves. Your First of all, the guard at the gate. <laughs> An old-timer, I give it to you, but yep. Mr. Groden, man, I, you are a sex symbol, my friend. <laughs> I thank you very much, Pete. You know, then up into the elevator. It happens all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> you're really a sick puppy. Oh, you're so sick. God. Uh, you are one of three. The others being, I believe, Joan Rivers and David Steinberg to be permanently booked as exclusive guests on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Is that not true? No, that is true. Yes. 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 That, after my second appearance, he put me under exclusive contract as a, as a guest. And after my... 12th uh, appearance, he banned me. <laughs> <laughs> he really did. I mean, I, I started off like a house of fire, and he thought it was terrific. And then, you know, I would come out, and I would, I would say things like, uh, I'd be like uh, the second guest, and the things hadn't been going well. It's pretty quiet out there, you yeah. know, and I'd come out, and I'd say, gee, you know, rather than me come out into an atmosphere like this, you know, 500 people there, and try to be funny, why don't we just put on a, a film clip of a previous appearance where I was funny? And I was gone for like about 18 months. I thought that was kind of funny, but nobody else did. Well, you know, the important guy John, didn't. Johnny doesn't get But that. after about 10 years, I was banned many, many oh, times. Listen, many times. I know many things that Johnny doesn't get, and that's one of them. He did not. He didn't appreciate <laughs> no, that no, one. And, and, no, no. Uh, in fact, Freddie DeCord, if it turned to... Uh, Bob Dolce, who passed this along to me in the in the uh, spirit of the Freedom of Information Act, he says we won't be seeing Mr. Groden for a while. But then I'd be back on with the other with the other host. Yeah. And Johnny would look at look at me again, and then he come. And after about ten years, he had me on. Uh, he started to have me on again, and once during a commercial, he. But you know what's so funny? What? Is you nailed the court of it. Well, we won't be seeing Mr. Groden. <laughs> <laughs> and probably that Ed McMahon said. You know. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but but about about ten years after about ten years of uh, being banned and not being banned and then he now I'm finally back on the show and he leans over to me during a commercial and says you know for a long time I had no idea what to do with you and, and now I realize I can do anything with you right, because right. you're just you can do anything and, right. and I said yeah you can do anything and that's when we really started to cook and I would say things to him that were never said to him not only on the air but I don't even think off the air right not right. even off the air like. Do you know who you are? Do you have any idea who you actually are? And he goes, what do you mean? I'm Johnny. You know, he like it. Oh, he I remember this. Yeah. And he yeah. carried it on beautifully. Yep. And he was funny and, and he was great. He was brilliant. I mean, you know, he doesn't need me to say how brilliant he was. But for, uh, for about 10 years then, I would say anything to him. And yep. he would say anything to me. You see, I would have expected Johnny, when you came back after 10 years, to say, why haven't you been on? You know? <laughs> well, he never he never acknowledged that he that I was up. But when I came on and I and I said, you know, Johnny, I've been on Radio Free Europe uh, most of the day. <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize you had that kind of power. You know, he <laughs> laughed and he realized. Listen, if 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 somebody was like Beverly, you know, people said people that do have a trouble trouble with me. I understand. I mean, right. if I didn't know who I actually was, I would have a lot of trouble right. seeing a guy like me. Yeah, yeah. You know, a guy like me is going to come on if I don't know that that you're kidding and that you're really you know just the guy's going to say you can scratch your ankle without bending over. That's the worst that's going to come out of me. You know, if I didn't know that, you know, I would be terrified. Don't book that guy, for God's sake. He's going to kill me. the guy who talks funny that will, will understand uh, Nick Arnold. And, right. the, and the other thing that, that used to, and, and Paul Simon, who's an old friend of mine, the composer, he said, you know. We, we all know who Paul Simon is. It's okay. Well, he's also a uh, senator from Illinois. I, that's why I said the composer, you know. And I think there's a sculptor named Paul Simon. In fact, when I did the Paul Simon special years ago, 
it was a it was a show about me directing him and as a special and i said you know we, we should call the uh, this special. crowd only knows the composer they only know the composer they don't know the senator and they don't know the sculptor anyway paul simon said he said you know when you go on a talk show you are more relaxed than the host and that's not really appropriate i said I, I, what do you want me to do you want me to tense up you know this uh, if i'm if i'm uh, now you give me a little more what do they do turn the light on oh thank you uh, I said, I, I can't help that, but he thought I shouldn't be more real. He thought I should be, the host should be the most relaxed. The book is called We're Ready For You, Mr. Groden. It's in the stores now, behind the scenes of big time TV talk shows, movies, and elsewhere. Good stuff, and thanks for the mention you gave me in here. Thanks, Tom. It's great, and I, and I really look forward to seeing you in your new, uh, venue. Your new uh, venue. 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 <laughs> Just kind of lays there, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at my prompter. Turn around and look. They want to give, my staff wants to give you their resumes. <laughs> Tom, that's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, it sure yeah, ain't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks sir. a lot. Always Thank a pleasure. Thank Charles you. Groden, folks, we're ready for you, Mr. Groden, out now in hardcover at bookstores everywhere. Back with Jackie Collins.